following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFN at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 25 minutes to go until the opening bell, and we got markets marginally in the negative right now. Kind of what happened when we were coming into the program just yesterday. We have the S&Ps minus about five points, trading at 4,059. We reached a high of 4,076 yesterday, just over the highs we had on Monday. You got the NASDAQ 100 down about 31 points right now, 13,538. Taking a look at the NASDAQ 100, right? Quite an acceleration from the lows that we had back in early March. You're talking about a low of about 12,200. We trade up 1,400 points. That's about an 11% run over the course of the last month from March 5th to early in April. We reach a high yesterday in the NASDAQ 100, 13,655. We're about 100 plus points off that level, but we're bumping right up against the price point of 13,900 with the way the NASDAQ 100 moves. I mean, look at the size of these three bars we have on a daily basis. You're talking about a low couple days ago, that's Monday's action of 13,304, the high 13,615. You're talking about 300 plus point bars. We get a 300 plus point bar today to the upside, and you're talking about pushing the all time highs in the NASDAQ 100. You got the Dow negative by about 40 points. 33,275, pretty interesting when you take a look at the Dow. I got an uptrend channel up here, whether you're going from the highs we had back in June, back in September, we've been bumping up against that level a couple times. We're now above that level. Be interesting to see what happens with the Dow as if we bounce off that level and continue higher or maybe trade back within this channel line in the Dow. And we got the Russell, negative five points as well. And as you see, talked about it, right? Bud Rolfs. If you're not familiar with TFNN, Bud Rolfs, one of our technicians, one of our hosts in the years back, he was all about channel lines, folks. And what he would say, the Russell is a great example of channel lines and how they work, in Bud's opinion. Learned a lot from him. Uh, you break out of the channel, and then what do you do? You wait for it to come back and test the channel line. And look at how this has worked on the Russell, right? We come back and test that channel line on January 5th. We've come back and almost test that channel line only to bounce on three occasions now, whether it was February 1st, we were back down approaching that level, whether it was the price point on March 5th, we were down there. And again, we were down there on March 25th, all those times bouncing off that channel line. If you're drawing it yourself, you're talking about the highs of June 9th, correlating to the highs we had back in November. We then accelerate above it and test it to the upside. The Russell continuing to show strength. I mean, you put this thing on a three-year weekly, right? Talk about breaking out in epic fashion. You put this thing even on a five-year weekly, quite the acceleration in a big way in the Russell. The Russell was one of the ones that it had to get above the high that it had going back all the way to 2018, right? We did not make new all-time highs in the Russell until all the way back in November. But since then, we've traded basically from 1,600 up to 2,200 in the Russell. Commodities, Bitcoin trading a little bit lower. We'll go back to a daily. Bitcoin down about $2,000 right now at 56,685. We got the oil contract holding pretty steady right now. We'll put it back on a 15 minute. Crude, a little bit of a drop just in the last few minutes. We were up there near $60. Crude, just since nine o'clock. In the last 10 minutes, crude just dropped about 40 cents. We're trading at $59.44 pennies. We got the gold contract, negative $5 at 1737. It's been quite a run from the lows we had about a week ago in gold of 1677. Yesterday, gold was up to 1746. I mean, folks, you're talking about a solid $70, basically, from the lows that we had last Wednesday to the highs we made last night. Right now, we're down about $5 in gold. Silver's down about 15 cents at 2507. And we got to check in on notes and bonds. We got quite a little spike. We'll zoom it in at about 3 a.m. Eastern time. We were as high as 131.30, putting it back on a daily. A little bit of a pop here. I mean, we're back to basically where we were, which is remarkable, uh, all the way back to March 5th, right? The low on March 5th was 131.23. We're trading at 131.22. You're talking about a yield right now of 1.66%. 1.66% on that 10-year. The 30-year is negative eight ticks right now at 156.09. And we'll jump over to the VIX. Volatility index as this market just continues higher. The VIX, how about a 16.87 print on the VIX? Quite the acceleration. Let's just see if that's a real print. Sometimes, 
Yeah, that seems to be that numbers were down there. Not sure. Eight in the morning. Maybe that's a little bit erroneous. This is a minute bar that I put it on just to see if it's real. But we got some prints in the VIX down at 1740. We're back above 18 as we get a little bit of negative action zooming in on the S&Ps to see the trend line in terms of where we were as well on a one minute. You do see a little bit of volatility at nine o'clock down to 4057. We're trading at 4059 right now in those S&Ps. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping around to some of the headlines. Uh, IMF, they were out with their numbers yesterday talking about growth. They're out today talking about the potential in tax revenue by getting over the virus. Uh, the economic growth from controlling the global pandemic in all countries, this is worldwide we're talking about here, all right? IMF could generate more than $1 trillion in additional tax revenue across the globe by 2025 in advanced economies. Point being here that this article makes underlying the benefit of investing in shots. Folks, it's a worldwide economy. Many of the companies that exist in the S&P 500 function in a worldwide capacity. Uh, you want them to be doing good business. We need the world to get back to normal, not just the United States. And you really start to see it when you talk about the economic impact of taxes. Think about what the economy will be doing if you're talking about a trillion dollars extra in taxes. Nations should continue to spend and support health care systems and households until COVID-19 spread occur globally and the economic recovery strengthens. The IMF said in a fiscal monitor report released early Wednesday, vaccination will more than pay for itself, providing excellent value for public money invested in ramping up global vaccine production and distribution. Uh, quite a price tag for a trillion dollars pushing it out over the next three or four years. Uh, caught my eye in a big way. You know what else caught my eye? How about JP Morgan? J JP Morgan and Jamie Dimon saying this boom could easily run into 2023. Folks, I agree with this one. I keep saying over and over now, Jamie Dimon, a brilliant guy, JP Morgan, one of the best banks on Wall Street, if not the best, right? JP Morgan, and dealing with a little bit of the saga of. Archegos, but does not seem to be impacted right up there at 152.54. Now we get all the bank earnings next week, but it just in terms of talking about the estimates, um, I have little doubt that with excess savings, new stimulus savings, huge deficit spending, more quantitative easing, a new potential infrastructure bill, a successful vaccine and euphoria around the end of the pandemic, the U.S. economy will likely boom. You don't got to be a genius, folks, to figure out the pent-up demand, and he lists off all the accolades there pretty well, um, this boom could easily run into 2023. It's so hard to quantify a lot of what's going on right now because we've never lived through it before, folks. Um, the type of volatility we're seeing, the market is so good at usually making estimates of future multiples, of future earnings, then the market prices in the multiples of those earnings and how it should apply to their market capitalization. But all that gets thrown out the window when you have a year like 2020, where every single statistic is skewed. You can't base off 2021 and 2022 growth rates off anything that happened in 2020. Point being, there might be a lot more pent up demand than the market even realizes right now. With that said, you have the S&P trading at 4,060. So you better believe there's a heck of a lot of optimism when this is a chart of the 500 stocks in the S&P 500. We just said we should add rockets all over this thing to the upside because it is a rocket ship to the upside, folks. But man, we got some pent up demand in a big way. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to be coming back. We're going to be talking to Kevin Hinks about the market action coming up. Stay tuned. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world, represented in the Fibonacci sequence. These special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. 
If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps negative by about three points right now. Tech stocks, NASDAQ 100 negative by about 25. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks, folks. Every trading day, 11 a.m. Eastern time, live on Tiger TV. Tune in, Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. Kevin Hicks, Alex Coffey and the team talking the market action of the day, breaking down hypothetical trades, going through option trades, going over risk premium, the whole deal. Kevin Hicks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. You know, kind of a quiet start to the morning. Uh, you know, some of the data that we're getting overnight, not really first-level data, mortgage apps and international trade. None of those numbers really shocking. Mortgage apps flipping a little bit as rates go higher. But Jamie Dimon's letter making some headlines today. Though, if you watch financial news on a daily basis and are in tune with the market, Jamie Dimon really didn't say anything that's groundbreaking. The only really headline I got out of his letter to shareholders was that the duration, that it could easily run into 2023. That kind of caught my attention as being something, you know, that he's groundbreaking on. The other one that made, made me laugh was, you know, if the government spends the uh, stimulus money wisely. I'm like, well, you can throw that out the window. They're not going to do that. <laughs> That's quite an so, if statement. But... So that part's completely discounted. But overall, I thought his letter was aspirational in terms of it's balanced, uh, but aspirational pretty much and uh, did no harm. Let's put it that way. Uh, Kevin, I've been talking about the pent-up demand might be greater than the market anticipates. And CNBC, they haven't written an article about my statements anytime uh, recently on the front page at, uh, of their new of their website. I joke. I mean, Jamie Dimon, a brilliant man, obviously one of the brightest guys out there on Wall Street, managing J.P. Morgan. Um, and I just agree with what he said. You know, I, I, you put it well as in nothing too genius. He didn't break down any statistics. He said, hey, we got quantitative easing. We have stimulus. Um, we have excess savings. We have the vaccination program going well. You better believe that things should go well and, and tying it into the market, man. It's been a straight run from, you know, what, 2100 almost in the S&P to sitting at above 4000 right now. You better believe there's some optimism, man. But 2023, it's only April of 2021. So I agree. That's pretty lofty. Um, but I would agree with him just just from like a common sense, you know, regular man looking at what's going on in the economy perspective. 
because in almost any of our lifetimes, Kevin, we've never seen anything like this. Everyone's been locked down for a year. I was saying to um, some friends yesterday, even those that have been out and about over the last year, that maybe they haven't been as careful, maybe they're on the younger demographic, right? They've been impacted as well because everything's been shut down. Maybe they have family members they can't see. So even those that have been living more than most over the last year, um, they still are, have their pent up demand, right? Because we've all been so affected by this as we come out of this pandemic over the last year in a, in a big way, man, across the whole globe, let alone the US as we come out of it right now. Um, as you mentioned, man, I always got like 15 things to talk to you about this morning. It's kind of dry. You know, it's Wednesday, like we were talking about yesterday. We come into bank earnings next week. We have a couple um, earnings events going on this week, easing into to the, the quarterly earnings coming up. What are you guys going to be talking about on Fast Market coming up at 11 o'clock today, Kevin? Tommy, our theme, we, we, we've been going through themes on the show in between earnings seasons. And today's theme, payments, Visa. Square cool. and PayPal are what we'll look at. Like Folio is going to compare Square to PayPal. That'll be fascinating. And then Oof. Visa, what most people pay most of their uh, daily items with. So we'll look at the new and the old in terms of payment space. That's awesome, man. You know, one of the articles I'm going to get to later, Kevin, I'll, I'll bring it in real quick. Is it uh, Played? Is that how you pronounce it? Or Plaid Played? Um, the news out there today. So um, they topped a $13 billion valuation, and that's after Visa was trying to go after them for $5.3 billion. They announced it about a year ago. There were some antitrust concerns. They ended up squashing that deal. But to speak to what you're talking about, man, that payment sector is just on fire. Um, you go from Visa agreeing to pay $5.3 billion dollars kevin for this company and now within a year they scrap the deal they just raised money at 13.4 billion um the world is changing pretty fast man electronic payments i use whether it's um uh wells fargo what uh, there's a it's it's escaping me but the payment you know a, yeah i have a duplex kevin i collect my rent they're paying me via electronic transfer right checks sure. are out the window man and these stocks have been on fire rightfully so um, everything's getting done electronic in a big way. Uh, now, I, I want to ask you as well, You were you in, was it Pepsi that you were a market maker in, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So I was Pepsi a, it, you know, w within the GE pit, which is the main stock that I traded through my years at the CBOE, Pepsi was also in that pit. So it was one of the second level, actually, it's pretty first level stock that I traded along with GE. Now, I know, you know, I was just looking at the week ahead, and, and I'm, I'm probably getting ahead of even where we are, but we got Pepsi earnings coming up, I believe it is, next week as well. Um, I was checking out them. So when, when you're in a market maker pick, Kevin, and you have earnings going on in, in any equity, how does that go, man? Just in terms of the listeners out there, you know, that's like kind of the old school, the pits, right, in, in, in the pits of the trading environment. Um, for an earnings event and stuff like that, what's that usually do to the, the pit and things have changed? But back when you were in there, man, what's an earnings day like when, you, when you're managing one of those stocks and you got an event like that coming out? Well, what you just said, it's an event. Right. And so, you know, what's going to happen to implied volatility is going to rise into the event. You also know that implied volatility is going to come out relatively quickly after the event. And what's left is the move that happens. And so those are all the things that you're trying to navigate. And sometimes you're right. And sometimes you're safe and neutral. And sometimes you're wrong based on these moves. So, what you try to do as trading a big position in a name is not to get too caught up in the events. Trade the bid and ask, right? Adjust your inventories as volatility moves up and down. And then understand where volatility is historically in this name and understand where you want to trade it. And just let the bid and ask, let the order flow decide where implied volatility goes and then your job is to exploit that as it moves so my job was always to not to get in the way of where volatility is going based on this event just trade it right if you if, if my market is one dollar at 120 and you buy several hundred for me at a dollar 20 guess what my market is now 110 130 and we move it up to to that so um that's nice. the way let the order flow take the volatility and then once it comes out get it back down to that level where there's two-way order flow as quickly as possible tommy 
Pretty cool. Folks, what you're hearing is experience. There's nothing like experience in the market. And I've heard you talked about Pepsi. We've talked to you, my dad and I, about Pepsi many times before. Sure. I saw them coming up next week. Um, and one of the things I, I know you always talk about Pepsi, they don't they don't move very much on earnings usually, right? right? Everything is always a different case. We're living in interesting times, to say to the least, in 2021. Um, but that experience, Kevin, folks, you just heard it. You hear it every day on Fast Market at 11 o'clock. Um, I'm sure maybe you'll touch on Pepsi next week when they come out with their earnings. But sure. I always think you, man. When I hear Pepsi, because you always say, you know, maybe they don't move that much. And it makes sense, right? It, what's the volatility on a company like Pepsi outside of COVID when everything's got a little bit of volatility more so than usual um, on the expectations? Well, Kevin, we look forward to it, man. I'm going to be listening to that conversation, talking about Square and PayPal, two rocket ships during the last year to the upside. And uh, we appreciate the update, all, as always, Kevin. And we uh, look forward to the program at 11 o'clock, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Thanks, Kevin. Have a great one, man. Folks, tune in. 11 o'clock, coming up in an hour and a half. Fast Market. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got the S&Ps climbing to flat territory at 4,064 right now. We get the NASDAQ at negative 25 points in the NASDAQ 100. You're trading at 13,548. We get the Dow flat as well. All the markets accelerating a little bit upwards into the opening bell. And we get the Russell positive right now by less than a point at 2,255. Jumping over to Bitcoin. Bitcoin down about $2,000. But man, we're $1,000 off the low we have. Look at that acceleration just from two in the morning. 
you trade from 59,000 to below 56,000 and just like that you pop about a thousand dollars from 815 talk about some volatility in bitcoin in a big way trading 56,650 uh jumping around to some of the stories out there staying with crypto how about coinbase man talk about some numbers coinbase estimates q1 revenue jumped ninefold ninefold to 1.8 billion ahead of its ipo i mean you know, this is a press release, folks, but man, they got some details to release to the press um, when you talk about these numbers, folks. So Coinbase updated investors with first quarter financials as the company prepares for a direct listing on the NASDAQ next week. They said revenue climbed more than ninefold from a year earlier to $1.8 billion. And then how about this number? Net income climbed to between 730 and 800 million from 32 million a year earlier so they were almost break even you're making 32 million that definitely ain't break even uh, but it's almost break even when you think about they're now pulling in about three quarters of a billion dollars in net income remarkable when you look at that number that's talking about q1 folks net income climbing remarkable number uh look at that acceleration of the revenue they're hitting these are quarterly numbers, folks. It has been an re amazing ramp up. I mean, think about how big Bitcoin was coming into 2019. It was already everywhere. And meanwhile, Coinbase was only pulling in revenue of maybe 100 million, maybe pulling in 191, 186. They were pulling in only 66 million in revenue for the first quarter of 2019. You go over two years revenue, you go from 66 million to almost two billion dollars in revenue remarkable um, what they've had trading on the private market has valued the company at 68 billion a number that swells to about 100 billion when factoring in a fully diluted share count expect some volatility when they go public next week folks anytime you're dealing with these types of multiples because what's going to happen is the market's going to be trying to price in the future growth well, are they going to be growing ninefold again? I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe that's what the market thinks, that they're going to hold that growth rate. Uh, pretty tough to hold that growth rate when you look at where Bitcoin has come and gone over the last year. This run representing a large portion for their revenue. A year ago, you're trading at 6,400 in Bitcoin. Fast forward, you're trading at 60,000. That's an acceleration in the crypto market. You're seeing it in Ethereum. Um, Ethereum 20, crossed $2,000 for the first time. Last week, I'll try and get a chart up of Ethereum towards the end of the program. Um, crypto markets, the headline yesterday, reached a valuation of $2 trillion for the first time. But man, that is quite a price tag when you talk about $1.8 billion in revenue in 90 days. Excuse me, especially coming off the acceleration that they've had in a big way. All right, what else we got going on? Jump into the Archegos saga. We can't have a day without talking about Archegos. Uh, Morgan Stanley. Credit to them. They sold about $5 billion of shares owned by Archegos a day before that huge block trade sent the market going crazy across it. So the sale of bas sale of the basket of shares on March 25th. All right, now I'm just going to pull up, uh, we'll pull up Viacom to start. We'll zoom in on the action. And they sold them on the 25th, it looks like. So it was still trading at 70. I mean, talk about risk management folks yes they sold it when it was at 70 but it looks like they had enough capital from archegos probably to cover themselves versus the other companies that were forced to sell credit swiss the the worst offender of them all at 40 to 40 whatever dollars uh the story out there that they sold the shares on march 25th completed a fixed discount according to person with knowledge of the matter uh, they sold the shares held by the family office in about 10 companies after the market closed may lead to hedge funds. The part here is that their early bid and exits helped the for firm emerge largely unscathed from a fund flame out that's infected billions of losses. I mean, Credit Suisse is going to lose approximately $5 billion. That $5 billion, folks, that they're working with there. In that portion of Credit Suisse's business, they only make about a billion dollars a year in that entire part of their business in terms of extending the capital to, to Huang and, and the likes of. So they basically burn five years of profits in that portion of their business because of one account that they let get out of whack. These financial companies, Credit Suisse, they got big problems. Not sure how you correct that one. There's the chart of Credit Suisse trading at 11 right now, down from 15 when the saga began. You pull up a chart of Morgan Stanley, 
trading at 80, unaffected basically. JP Morgan, unaffected. Goldman Sachs, essentially unaffected, just off the highs at 328 from 356. I mean, it's just remarkable that this can continue to happen. But uh, Morgan Stanley was one of the early backers of the family office. So what's interesting here, right, is that Morgan Stanley was one of the early backers of Huang. And maybe they were one of the early backers because management there was confident in their risk protocols to be able to manage somebody that they suspected could get out of whack in terms of their risk. I mean, you saw that Goldman Sachs didn't do business with Huang until like 2019 or 2020. Morgan Stanley was one of the first ones in there doing business with him. They were collecting the fees off, to, off his trades, and then they cut their losses before they were punished. In Wall Street, man, talk about sharks eating each other. And uh, Credit Suisse, they got eaten in a big way. You got six or seven executives gone, but that seems to be a company-wide problem in a big way. Now, jumping to the next segment, because, folks, if you're a long-term buyer in either of these equities, as in you want to get into them, you could totally just dabble right here. Get a partial position. It pulls back a little bit. You can dabble again. Both of them very strong companies. You're talking about Viacom. You're talking about Paramount Plus, I believe, is going to be their service. coming in for fruition. It's our belief. And you can get into another one of these two stocks. But these that uh, I like particularly anyway. you got Discovery up about 4%. Folks, Discovery, I have uh, uh, family in my house. So their brands, in terms of TLC, Lifetime, um, especially when stretched over probably more females for those roles. you got the, I believe it's uh, the Food Network might be in there as well. they got a plethora of lineups, and they're doing a great job of signing people up. The remarkable thing is Discovery is about five. Now, I own Discovery, so a little bit of a promotion here, but I'm walking you through the methodology. Discovery, $5 a month. They're actually getting people who have cable subscriptions, who have access to the channels within their lineup, are paying for Discovery Online for exclusive access to programs they're only putting online. So you watch a show on one of their channels, like 90 Day Fiance or, or something like that, one of the shows that they really accelerate, they, they put certain portions of that program or, or certain spin-off programs maybe of that program only accessible online. It's really remarkable that you think about the business plan that they are now signing people up for their streaming service who have access to their channel through cable already. That's quite an achievement, folks. It really is, but it speaks to the demand for those networks. So that's Discovery and then Viacom, CBS, Paramount Plus. Uh, they got a lot going on as well. Quite a haircut, but both of those stocks higher this morning. We're going to touch on the fact that maybe options pointing to a rise. Maybe the pain is over in those equities as the selling looks to be gone from some of those big banks. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to be talking about Forex when we come back with our man Teddy Kegstad from Forex Trading Unlocked. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Every trading day, Wednesday, we talk to our man, Teddy Kegstad. We're talking Forex, folks. You can check out Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlocked. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday morning at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegstad, what's happening, man? I'll tell you what's happening. I'm going to play golf after this. <laughs> Ooh, got to love it. What's, what's the temperature like in Chicago uh, today, man, in early April? It's actually, you know what, we're above normal temperatures. Yesterday we actually hit above 80, and today we're still going to be in the 70s. So that's, we're supposed is... to be in the upper 50s, mid-50s right now. Well, that blows my mind, man. I was looking for you to say 60 maybe, and, and you'd be chipper in early April up in Chicago. Man, that's awesome, man. Enjoy. I've been wearing Nothing shorts like... for the past five days. <laughs> Got to love it. Early yeah. spring, nothing like it, man. Nothing like it. So, Absolutely. speaking of nothing like it, what do we got going on in the forex world, Teddy? I was checking around some of the charts, uh, and where where do you want to kick things off in terms of what we have going on over the last few days? Well, let's talk about the dollar index first. Uh, that took a real uh, one on the chin yesterday, gap lower with the real uh, power drive against the dollar and most of the currencies across the globe. Now, I've been listening to, especially over the past couple of days, a lot of pundits saying. The interest rates now are, are, are topping out. They're going to start uh, reversing gears. Gold should start rallying. Oil is now the, the bull run is over. You know, um, I have a problem when people, when the trend, when you're making higher move highs and higher move lows and you're just correcting off of one of those, that doesn't mean you have a change in trend, you know. So and uh, if you really look at, you know, how we've been talking about how interest rates, you know, which is definitely a fundamental part of currency pricing, how that's been impacting the markets over especially this past couple months, you know. And uh, yes, they are bottoming. But they haven't made a higher move high after a higher move low, you know, and the same is for gold, which I know you guys watch a lot of. It sure. has kind of a double bottom. I mean, you could say that the last the recent swing low is actually a higher move low because it's a little bit higher than the bottom set like a month ago. But that's not necessarily that it's bottoming, you know, so it's kind of it's kind of stabilizing right now. And I think yes. that people have to take into consideration, like cause I'll get into the individual crosses now. The U.S. dollar has been either trending one way with certain markets as a bull or as a bear for a very, very long time. Most of them related to oil, interest rates, and gold. So since you have this stability, I mean, oil has been choppy at best. It's neutral. Is it a bear? I don't know about that one. You know, we have the numbers coming out later. We'll see how they impact things. Just because the bonds are up for a couple of days, I mean, you got to realize they've only had their first three positive weeks and they're only slightly positive in over a year that's that that's not that significant of a turn you sure know what i'm saying so let's let's see how this pans out so let's start with the uh, u.s dollar canada affected by oil higher move low after a lower move high so right now a breach of 126.50 it definitely would give us a nice upside target of around a, a buck 28 even but this is if oil is stable to lower if oil all of a sudden turns around and breaks out to the upside all bets are off us dollar canada bears will come and slam new move lows we will not get a higher move high that's for sure nzd usd 
pretty much uh, in a similar fashion because of oil right now below uh, what is it 70 70 it has a downside target of about a do of a 69 20 so it has a little bit more room to the downside um, but not very much as far as what I'm looking for on a corrective move on that now remember Australian dollar US dollar we had a head and shoulders that appeared a, a couple weeks ago and that it was made a nice little sell-off. It's more neutral to lower, but it's still a little bit of a bear, and it still is, you know, but that's because yeah. of oil, once again. You know, if oil gets a surge, all bets are off. Aussie U.S. dollar, that bull will come back raging because right now we're only in a correction. Remember, that currency especially has been driving a, a major bullish wave against the dollar since um, February, March of last year, you yeah. know, and, and the velocity was very, very strong. So, this short-term neutral pullback is not necessarily bearish long-term, okay? So we're kind of, I think, neutralizing there. But I, like I said, you have with the, with the Aussie, you can still key off the 76, 76 level for direction. Below there, I think that you probably still have a chance to hit get down to 74, 90, probably the, the, the extent of what this correction will do if it still keeps going lower. Now let's get to the yen, one of your favorite ones. Yeah. Key off, key off of the 110.90 level, okay? Its bearish downside target is 109 right now for a correction off of its high. Now remember, we've been talking about the yen in relation to oil and gold a lot over the past couple months. As long yes. as oil is flat to lower and gold is neutral to higher, then you can probably see the corrective move in the U.S. dollar yen down to, like I'm looking at, 109. Now remember okay. – we were talking a couple months ago, and I had upside targets in the yen, and all of a sudden, every week I would talk to you, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, well, longer term we have this one and this one, but short term I have this target. A week goes by, we blow through the first target, the <laughs> short term target, like two days later, and by the time we're talking, we're already at a target I'm looking for three weeks ahead of schedule, you know? So I think that we still, if, if oil all of a sudden turns around, and especially if gold starts to go back to its lows, you're going to see the Japanese U.S. dollar yen skyrocket through its current high and probably get up towards 112 half to 113 even. So, But otherwise, right now, as long as it's stable in these other markets, you could probably see this little correction push down to 109. I think that's about it. Um, this U.S. dollar Swiss is in a similar situation. It's a flight to quality currency that's coming off of its lows. This one has had a very big sharp sell-off in the past few sessions. Now, this yeah. is big when we talk about the eurozone. The two markets that are most volatile and have the biggest wide ranges not right now is the pound and the Swiss. Well, the pound is always typically a wider range than the Swiss or the euro. But when the Swiss has more activity than the euro, that is a big deal as far as European currencies, okay? So for the Swiss, I think you have to think of it more as a big profit-taking slide going on right now. Is it overdone? I don't know about that. I still have a downside target of 92.70. I think that will be about as far as it goes, um, especially as long as the 30-year is neutral, you know, and those other ones are stable, you know, because if the, all of a sudden you see a break in the bonds or a rally in oil or a rally in gold, then, you know, um, or that's just not going to happen, okay? So now let's get to the pound, another big oil-related uh currency since oil has been stable remember the pound is like the aussie dollar it's been just exploding versus the dollar for the past year okay and that's pretty much run into its big resistance pocket too because as these other three major markets stabilize at least and are, it's not that their trend is changing they're just not moving really they're setting in a range trade you know so i think that's where we're seeing major profit taking in the pound so for the pound, I have a bearish downside target still of $1.36 even. With the way it's trading the past couple days, very likely it could follow through down to that area um, as long as, once again, gold and the 30 are stable. Okay, now if it breaches $1.34 or uh, was it $1.40? Yeah. 39.18, excuse me, then the bulls and all bets are off. You're looking at new move highs up to $1.41 even. But that would mean that we probably have an exploding rally in oil. You know, that okay. would really be, I think, the catalyst. And now let's get to the euro that everybody wants to talk about. Um, $1.1836 is our key upside down and uh, downside pivot right now. Above it right now, it's fairly strong. We have upside follow through right now today, but it's very tiny. If you look at how it's been trending up versus the dollar, it's not as severe as what the pound and the Swiss have been doing. So I think, is it running out of gas? Probably, you know, and if this is just a corrective move on the dollar, we're coming to this point where we're gonna get that reflex back, where all of a sudden the dollar bulls come back, 
the euro will get slammed, the pound gets slammed, etc. So, and that's where we're at. Teddy, man, that was such a great update, man. And uh, we look forward to talking to you more next week. I wish we had more time, man. Have a great week. Enjoy that golf Sharpening course. Sharpening your skills you as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. You got the S&P up about three points. NASDAQ 100 up by seven. The Dow up by 37. Russell pulling back a little bit. Check out that move. The Russell dropping from 2258. We're down about 20 points since the open at 2240 right now. Uh, Teddy was making some great points, folks. Just I uh, wish we had a minute or two extra. We talk to him every Wednesday at 940 in the morning. If you're talking Forex, please tune in during that time every week. Um, and he just makes a great point in general in terms of, you know, some of the moves that we've seen in comparison to the full trend we've had over the last year, not really a change of trend, folks, when you look at how far we've come. And it's a similar deal in terms of the market, right? Every, every day when I hear the market's like negative or something like that, it's not negative, folks. When you see where we've been, some of these pullbacks don't even register on this chart in the S&P. We've come so far, yet, you know, you start talking about getting a 10, 20, 30 percent retracement. Sometimes that's just a normal move when you've traded. We're almost up 100 percent, folks, from where we were. The S&Ps, just for some context here on a weekly, we got to go back 2174. We're up almost 100 percent. You put this thing on a weekly and there are not a lot of red bars, folks, over the last basically 55 weeks to 60 weeks since the lows we had in March. Same thing going on when he's talking about um, 
Forex world. There's just been huge trends. Maybe you're seeing a consolidation. Maybe you're seeing a small pullback. Doesn't exactly point to a change of trend out there. Uh, one to finish up. So one thing I was talking about, talking about the Archigo saga. And what they were referencing here is that option traders preparing for a bounce in two of those equity, in, in all the equities, but some of them getting some serious action. And what they're talking about is that uh, those options, they're pointing to potentially an acceleration um, when, you know, it's VIP shop they have in here, GSX, some of them as well. But it's not surprising, folks, when you get that type of devastation, the selling looks to be gone. We got Viacom up about 2.7% so far today at 45.47. We got Discovery up as well. Let's check in. Discovery shares uh, up about 2.3%. Doesn't mean they might take a while to come back. But both strong equities in a big way, just facing some carnage on the heels of the Archegos blow up. We'll check in on gold down about two bucks, trading at 1740. We got Bitcoin down $1,800 right now as well. And crude, we got inventory numbers in a half hour. We got crude trading at 5908. Stay tuned, folks. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour live programming all day at TFNN. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned.